I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the game for your system. And I will be giving you my optimized settings as well. But first, if you're having trouble with the Rivatuner statistics server overlay not showing in-game, then just add this command in the game's launch options. And in RTSS, select the medium application detection level and turn on stealth mode. Now, let's get into the comparisons. The boost player contrast setting can be very helpful, especially if you already have trouble spotting enemies. It basically adds a white halo effect around the player models, making them much easier to spot at all distances. Take a look at this setting in action in a couple different distances and judge for yourselves. In terms of performance, I saw no noticeable FPS hit, so I highly recommend you enable this setting. I will leave you to the rest of the comparisons and jump back in when there is something important to note. The model slash texture detail setting does exactly what it sounds like it does, but it also affects the baked shadows when going from medium to high. Since all of the maps in this game use baked shadows, it's a necessity to use high assuming you have the required VRAM on your system. Lowering particle detail from very high to high will greatly increase your frame rate in the majority of firefights, if not all. Thankfully, the visual quality looks very similar across all settings, so don't think you'd be missing out on anything. Those extra frames will actually help you when you need them the most.
Now, I am not an expert in these things, but from what I understood, since most of the shading slash shadows are baked in the maps, there's barely anything left for the ambient occlusion to have an effect on. Therefore, it mostly affects dynamic things, like your character's hand and weapon, player models, litter on the streets, like water bottles, and things like that. Therefore, this setting has a minimal impact on image quality than what we would have normally expected. The HDR setting has two options, and there is barely any difference between the two. Just set it to performance for free FPS. For some reason, the game uses the FSR 1.0 implementation, and it looks as bad as it sounds, introducing severe aliasing to the image and the FPS boost is barely noticeable, so just keep this disabled. The upgrade from Counter-Strike Global Offensive to Counter-Strike 2 had a definite impact on performance, especially GPU performance, making the game not as easy to run as before. But using my optimized settings can help bring out most of the lost performance back. The frame rate has increased significantly, which is really impressive since this game only has a few settings to adjust, but there are meaningful settings that can definitely scale and make an impact to the game's visuals and performance. I'd rather have games with fewer meaningful settings than ones with a lot of mostly useless settings. <laughs> 